Here we'll take a closer look at one of the interventions, they're called interventions, to increase time on task. For those of you unfamiliar with the term or the expression, it means the amount of time a teacher gives to a particular topic in a classroom session, time on task. That's my understanding of it. Now, this fishbone diagram, for those of you who are unfamiliar with the fishbone diagram, it's a graphic way of showing you the contributing factors to a particular outcome. In this case, the outcome that is desired is increased instructional time. In other words, more time spent on teaching a particular topic, for example, mathematics or so on. <coughs> so the contributing factors you have suggested by the education sector plan is project and group oriented homework. The traditional way is for a student to be given homework and go home and says, okay, do the homework. Now that child may not have parents who are educated to help that child, so that child suffers. Perhaps project and group oriented homework may contribute to time spent on the task by the student. Another contributing factor would be instructional hours added to schools. I am not aware of how many hours are currently spent in the classroom per week on say mathematics if it's just four or five hours or three hours. But the sector plan suggests an increase of instructional hours. Tutoring for weak students. Schools natural disaster proof. Reduced teacher absenteeism. Reduced student absenteeism. By doing a lot of number of things. One solution is to provide subsidies to poor families, defray costs. Another one is schools sited closer to where people live, and flexible schedules and seasonal needs and so on. And PTA's oversight of schooling. These are positive considerations that can be used to increase instructional time on task. I have used this graphic to better illustrate to you, a parent or teacher, the relationships of these different factors to the outcome. Rather than you having to read through a tense text, a text dense document that is so many pages long, you can see on one page the different factors and so better understand the relationships. One other suggestion is to use blended learning or flipped classrooms. Another is instead of extra lessons, students can use my software application called Click and Learn that, that many consider to be the Rosetta Stone for mathematics. For those parents who have computers at home, you can invest in your child's education by getting the software. There's a free limited version you can download with no obligations and use it for both grade school and secondary school students. Now, the education sector plan talks about accountability devices. What do they mean about that? Well, exit examinations implementing exit examinations, monitoring learning assessments, monit monitoring lessons. By lessons we mean classroom lessons, not extra lessons. By comparing the performance of the different regions in Guyana to each other, comparative analysis, a comparative assessment and then to compare Guyana's results with the results in the other parts of the Caribbean. So the overall sector plan has some substantial ideas, but the challenge is implementation of those principles and practices. 
Now, a good way to look at the education sector plan is using the input output framework. The implementation capacity and process and institutional capacity to implement the plan. That those are the key questions. What application, what software application does the Ministry of Education use or proposes to use for the implementation of this complex program? One cannot effectively implement a complex program using pen and paper methodologies. The regional education officers and the senior officers in the Ministry of Education need to have the project management skills in using software, not just having training in project management, but using the relevant software to be able to monitor and manage the implementation of the program. Is NCERT or the PU competent to use these apps? Do they use those apps? Are they aware of the existence of those apps? Does NCERT know about school management software? Is any school in Guyana using school management software or project management software? I don't think so. Now, the input output process is you have certain specifications to increase learning outcomes by all levels of education and all subgroups. Increase the differences of learning outcomes between subgroups, especially between students in the hinterland and the coast. So, a certain amount of input, resources, quality of facilities, quality of teaching, quality of curriculum, instructional time, time on task. This is what is inputted into the current system so that you can achieve the output that you want. This is the framework, the general framework input output framework. There is very little emphasis placed on ICT and education in the plan. Note that. Very little emphasis. If you were to read a document, if you see ICT mentioned three or four times, that's a lot. Now one of the outcomes the plan is aiming for is a percent of grade school, grade four students at mastery level on literacy literacy assessment by 2018. So we're looking at a graph dealing with literacy assessment. On the y-axis, the vertical axis shows the percentage, and on the horizontal axis you see the different years. 2013, the baseline, that is, was 15. What that says is, in 2013, the percent of grade students at mastery level is only 15%. Imagine that. 20, in 2013, in 2014, it is 20%. In 2015, 28%. In 2016, well, this is definitely not accurate. These are figures. I don't know where they got the figures from. But based upon recent results, Great school students have not achieved that level of mastery literacy. It's not 38%, it's far less. So they want, in the five year period, they want to achieve 50% literacy. That's in 2018. Twenty seventeen they want four to five percent. Twenty sixteen. We are in twenty sixteen and we way below target. Way below target. In other video we'll continue our analysis of the plan.